Okay, so we've got just we've got about uh, we've got about seven or eight folks in the stream, and in the, uh, we're about seven minutes after one. So I think we're gonna hop in and get started. So, uh, like I said, I was telling uh, Elena and Dylan when they first got in here last night. We left off. Uh, we went to the gym with Craig, um, and we uh, almost died on a treadmill. Um, and now uh, we got home, we took a nap, and then when we woke up from our nap, we realized that we were about to be late for a meeting with Amanda's English teacher. Um, we had five minutes to get to the school and make this meeting. So we're gonna pick up right now uh, where we left off. We just made it uh, to Amanda's school for this meeting with her dreamy teacher. Okay. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange, uh, or I think it's a, a, bright, a bright orange sticker that said visitor. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, is it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker, a youth and approach him for help. Uh, excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? <laughs> I love this guy. Oh man, ideal teen aesthetic. The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Ugh. Come on kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. These youths these days. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's classroom anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, <laughs> fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh boy, oh boy, here it is, here it is, here it is. Mm -hmm. Yes! Dream Daddy. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Fine, Mr. Vega. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, right? Wow is right. Jesus. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We are not cool, Lucian, hmm. okay? You must be pastel. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. oh I will wait in the back for you anytime, Hugo. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student's desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Oh. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that he's a big old fucking jerk. The bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. I know that feel, Hugo. I know it. Hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. I feel your pain, my boy. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Or high schoolers? Or undergraduate college students? Just saying. Don't you teach high schoolers? That's right, because Amanda is a senior in high school. <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. 
Man, even in our fantasy world, education is still devalued. Ah. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, no problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. Please, call me Hugo. Oh, and I will. Uh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Did she fire a flaming tennis ball at the police station again, just like her good old dad? Hmm. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I, I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hasn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Oh, Amanda. Oh no, my sweet girl. Hmm. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we just moved. She's fine. I mean, as far as I knew she was fine, but she has a tendency to bottle things up. I mean, I guess it's, I mean, I guess she, she obviously does, since she's not doing her homework, but I didn't even know about it. Uh, but we did just move, so... Uh, Alright, we'll see. She, we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Huh. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... <sighs> I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. Yeah, uh, I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Uh, thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Oh. Anytime. Oh, don't, don't, don't say anytime, Hugo, because I will take you up on that offer. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Ah. Yes. <laughs> they ever catch that rye? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. This is our this is our mission for for the rest of of this stream. We got our eggplants from Craig. We gotta get eggplants from Hugo, you guys. Okay, you have to help me. This is this is non-negotiable. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Did anybody, did anybody else's high school go that late into the day? Like, like we're supposed to meet Hugo at four o'clock. And then at 4.15, class lets out. That seems super late to me for high school. I don't know. Um, I don't, but I don't remember what time we were let out of classes when I was in high school. But that seems super late. Ah. I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. What is our... Can we just talk about what, what kind of car is this? Also, the, like, papers and garbage in the car is, like, a little too, a too real. Really? Art schools like that. Jeez. That's wild. Do you do 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 y'all start later too, or is it really a longer day, or is it like, is it like that, like extracurriculars are kind of built into the end of the day, kind of? That's wild to me. Uh, I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Uh, Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. Okay. Seven to four. That's wild. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time. Okay. Would my daddy really have a crush on Mario Batali? I don't know about that. It was a very productive meeting. Oh. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Uh, sure thing. We can make something at home, or let's go to the mall food court. Where do you want to go? 
Where do you want to go, chat? Should we make dinner at home or should we go to the food court at the mall? Fair enough. Fair enough. Our best friend did absolutely drink marinara sauce, so. Okay, one vote for home. Oh, one vote for mall. The votes are contentious. Two votes for mall. Three votes for mall. Four votes for mall. We are going to the mall. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Hmm. Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. It is tax-free weekend. So maybe we could buy two things. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Oh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid, kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And, and that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Good job. Good dad talk. Good job. Have you been reading my tweets? <laughs> You have a Twitter? Huh? Oh, okay, the dad that doesn't know how to use the GPS on his phone knows what a tweet is. Come on. Continuity. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Hmm. Oh. I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Huh. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Come on, Amanda, we're having a moment here. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh, oh, uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh... I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to go to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Oh, she is so not listening to anything I'm saying. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Ah. Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay... Who you texting? Me? Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Your friend? Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? What? What? No! Dad! Oh, I can't believe you would... Uh. Dad! I mean, jeez, a little, get, you're getting a little defensive there, Amanda. I'm just saying, all I asked was if you liked him. I didn't say, did you like, like him? Why would you, ugh, gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Uh. Okay, Amanda. Good golly. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. Guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. That is the realest teenage conversation. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. Yes, that is that is the definition of a mall. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. What kind of mall is dead at like 4.30 in the afternoon on a weekday? Clearly this is not set in New Jersey, that's all I'm saying. Let's eat 
something disgusting for dinner. Yes. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Mm. Heck yeah? That's better. Mm. I don't think my dad would be the kind of dad who would think that hell is a bad word, but I'm just throwing that out there. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. If they don't get Sarku Japan, I know this is not a real mall. That is the only reason you go to the mall food court. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or you, do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Nachos at the mall food court. She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned, no, definitely stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig okay. in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're out. We're all out of nachos. So, huh. something's been bothering me for a while. <laughs> Amanda, I need to have a serious talk with you, father to daughter. Something's been really bothering me. Amanda, I don't know what a meme is. Can you explain memes to me? Hmm. Ugh, which meme? All. All memes, Amanda. What do they mean? What do they mean? Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Aww. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. Ugh. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead before the time it comes out. So it just dates it and isn't funny. <laughs> oh shit, what up? Aww. Dad, please. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Mm -hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment and being owned by Abercrombie & Fitch? Oops, I just clicked out of the game. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you could buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Come on, Amanda, get with it. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Huh. Oh, that one! <laughs> Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. Hey. There it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud of your puke stain in the Hot Topic. Speech! Amanda. All right. Speech! 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 All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Uh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Gatto had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Yeah. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Amanda is moved. 
She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Starting a slow clap in the hot topic! Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Oh, thank you. Hi. Oh, hey! Chain wallets! <laughs> I once come at that moment on a shelf of anime t-shirts. I actually, very very seriously, I'm not making this up. I, I didn't throw up slushy in a Hot Topic, but I absolutely had, like, a big slushy. And, like, literally, like, I just gotten it. So it was brand new, real big, real full. And I just, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I just fucking fumbled it. And it fell and hit a shelf on the way down. And the top popped off. And it was just, it was exactly, it was blue, cold, sticky, all over the place. And I was like 15 and I don't think I left, but I think I may have actually just put the cup on the ground and then walked away and pretended that it wasn't me. And it's one of the biggest, one of the biggest regrets of my life. One of, one of my biggest moral failings is that moment in Hot Topic. Never again. I will never do that again. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a dead goth and beyond. It is also, it's such a fabulous name. Peruse the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, or check the clearance bin for hot deals. Well, I know what I would do if I was actually there. And obviously the answer is clearance bin because there was a time in my life where full price items at Hot Topic would have been appropriate and I wouldn't have bat an eye, but these days, it is all clearance bin all the time at Hot Topic. Uh, what do you guys want to? What do you guys want to look at? Band T-shirts, ironic mugs, clearance bin. One vote for clearance. One vote for ironic mugs. Two votes for ironic mugs. Two votes for clearance. We need that tiebreaker. Tiebreaker vote. Or I will do it myself. But I'm gonna give the chat a second. Okay. I'm breaking the tie and I'm choosing mugs. Because this is a fantasy world, so in the fantasy world, I don't want to have to check the clearance bin. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time, I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. <laughs> it's Goth Dad. Okay. Yee, I'm so excited to meet Goth Dad. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a state. This guy has to have an accent. There's no way I can do this guy without an accent. Ex dad stenchal crisis, get out of here with your puns! I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I'm presuming that older gentleman means like he is older than the guy or the person behind the counter because this does not look like the face of an, somebody I would describe as an older gentleman, but we'll see. I can see that. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. What? What? Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Huh. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. I love him, I love him, I love him. <sighs> Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dadtron 5000. Yes, I will buy it for you. It is tax-free weekend. 
<laughs> wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Oh gosh. Flashbacks to all the things Amanda makes me buy. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing. What about my hair? Your dad's got cool hair too, excuse me. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. Okay, that's just fine. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Goth dad, goth dad, goth dad, and teach your dad. Oh, this is so good already. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Huh. Oh, cool. Long haul, long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Okay, so somebody made a t-shirt that has like the logo of this this like fake show on it. And it is the coolest t-shirt I've ever seen. And I bought it immediately as soon as I saw it. Um, if you, if, I'm sure if you Google the name of the show, it'll probably show up. It is really, really, really cool. And it's glow in the dark. I'm excited. I wish I had it in time for the stream, but unfortunately. Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. I would watch the shit out of this show in real life. Also the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the better ones, or one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. <laughs> They're Canadian, but I don't want, <laughs> I don't know how to give them a Canadian accent. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's a, that's a Southern accent, like no question. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer them there, damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die! Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, you're gonna die. Hmm. That's because we're about to die, you! This is art. Shh, beautiful. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Thank you! Thank you for posting the link to the t-shirt. It is the coolest thing ever. That's my favorite kind of video game merch or like any kind of merchandise. I don't like things that just have like the logos of stuff on it. I love shirts and, and hoodies and hats that have like things that exist within the world of that game so that if you wear it, it kind of looks like maybe you actually came from that place. Um, so I bought the shit out of that shirt because uh, I love I love that it like kind of makes it seem like that show actually exists. Okay, we're sleeping again. <sighs> Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. God, Amanda, let me sleep. It's so hard being a dad. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. It's a pretty big mistake, y'all. Huh. So, you excited for the cookout today? Oh my God, it's the dad barbecue. <laughs> Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Uh, I'm gonna click this one. I don't think that this has any consequences to what we do, so I'm just gonna click that one. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to party. Me too! I love those! Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Also, party tip, if you go to a party, and maybe you're a little socially awkward or you have some social anxiety like this guy and there's a food table, you just hang out at the food table. You stand there, you can have whatever food you want, and then this is the best part. People will always come to the food table. So all the other guests at the party will all make their way to the food table 
And then you only have the span of time that it takes them to get whatever food they want to talk to them. You can say hi, you can have a little chat, but then either you or they have a perfectly acceptable excuse to leave the table. So that's all you gotta do. Just stand at the food table and you will get your requisite amount of social interaction without having to actually mingle or do the whole social thing. So that's my tip from one introvert to the other. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. You are going to have to try a little bit hard on that, Amanda, okay? The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. One thing I hate less than actually having to go to parties is being either super early or super, super late because then everybody stares at you. Hey. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. No, that's even worse! That's even worse! The only thing worse than being so late that everybody stares at you is being so early that you're just awkwardly there. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph- Oh, it's at Joseph's house. Oh no. <laughs> Walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Because that's the rule of daddom. The grill is the only place where you're allowed to cook. Hmm. I learned that the other day on the Twitter. I guess we're not as early as I thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. Yep, sounds like a cookout. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Looks like we're not the only ones. Hey! There's Joseph! I wave to get his attention. Hello, Joseph. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Do not hug me. I do not want a hug from you. Oh. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies! Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Oh, we already met them when they stared creepily at us to return your plate, okay? Hi. Uh, this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. They stare creepily and say nothing. Again. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. I'm sensing a trend. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no. It's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hey. You guys! <laughs> Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to go... <sighs> Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Pastel, and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I, yeah, I am all about Mary. I am so excited that she's back. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary. For the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Pack it up! Pack it up, Amanda. We're getting out of here. Oh. Ha ha ha, my wife has a wonderful sense of humor. But please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. All the guys are really excited to meet me. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Because Amanda knows what's up, but also deviled eggs are delicious. Oh, I keep clicking out of the game. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. 
Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Hmm. Dad. Oh, they're going to talk about weather. Oh. Go. Do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social event? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center, center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. A uh, quick, super quick Mary synopsis. So, uh, in the last part of the game, <clears throat> we went to the bar. We went to a bar while Amanda was having a sleepover, and a woman walked up to us. She was drunk. She, uh, we we bought her a drink, um, and she kind of kind of was super hitting on us. And then we tried to get her to tell us some gossip about the town. And she said that she knows everything that goes on, that she's a steel trap, that she can keep secrets. But she was too drunk to actually tell us any of those secrets. And then she walked away. So we we met Mary in that. And then this is the second time we're encountering her in the game um, and finding out that she's actually married to one of the other guys um, in the neighborhood. So that's the, that's your, that's, that's what you missed on Dream Daddy. <clears throat> okay. Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well... Here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Well, that's a nice little little recap of what happened last time, too. Isn't that the guy that was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Yeah, I'd better investigate these daddies, okay? Okay, chat, here we go. Here is where you shine. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know how this works. I don't know if we get to talk to everybody in this round or if who we pick now is just who we talk to. I don't know. So I'm leaving it up to you. Who are we gonna talk to? Jo Robert and Brian, Matt, Hugo, and Craig, or Joseph and Damien. So Robert and Brian. Robert is the scruffy guy from the bar. Brian is the beardy guy um, who brags about his daughter all the time. Matt is the cutie from the coffee shop. Hugo is Amanda's teacher. Craig is our bro from college who drank a whole jar of marinara sauce. And then Joseph is, you know, creepy guy with so many kids. Uh, and Damien is the, the goth guy. Okay. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Okay, well, there it is. Matt, Hugo, and Craig have won. You, almost unanimously. Oh. Oh my god, they all said that at the same time. <laughs> oh my god. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's got, what's happening. Okay, do we talk to Craig, or do you want to keep listening to Matt and Hugo? I will also leave this decision up to you. I don't know why I keep my hand up like that. One vote for talk to Craig. Two votes for talk to Craig. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One vote for Matt and Hugo. Two votes for Matt and Hugo. Three votes for Matt and Hugo. Okay. Yes, Matt and Hugo. Oh. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. Hmm. <laughs> Smite. <my, laughs> Matt. If, for the, those who missed the last night's stream, too, I didn't know what voice to do for Matt, so I just decided that he constantly talks like he's making an ASMR video. Um, you're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. 
You could definitely say one painting is better than another if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely formalist standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, would one, would one, which one would you say shows more technical prowess? I am so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig, who returns it. Hmm. Well, sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had a better had better paintings overall. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> well, that's pretty subjective. Art is dead. What? <laughs> what should we say? <laughs> Do we have the opportunity here to get to get hearts from both of from all three of these guys at once? Okay, no idea. One vote for no idea. Two votes for no idea. Subjective, subjective. <laughs> Hugo hates jokes. <laughs> okay, um, that's pretty. That's a strong. That's a strong argument for hitting the subjective button. So I think we're gonna do that. Plus, come on, I want to talk, talk a little bit about art. Let's not lie. Hmm. Well, that's pretty subjective. How do you mean? Uh, well, th that painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. Matisse rocks. Oh. <laughs> that's a Magritte. Right. Art. Sorry. You're fine, dude. <sighs> We were just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Hmm. Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionism and the abstractionist beauty of cubism? That's... Damn right, Hugo. You're damn right. Man, that's all way above my head. I disagree. Any daddy who looks like that would understand what all those words mean. That's all I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> Me too. Uh -oh. ha, it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it. And that's awesome. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. I was, I was like, okay, I'm super sold on Hugo, but, but Matt, Matt is working his way into my heart right now, y'all. Ah. Just one minute about that. Hugo, please. Ah. Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. Pastel, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly, except for that jerk Brian. Hey. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Oh, God, I keep burping. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Oh, oh it's Matt's daughter! What is it, sweetheart? Dude, it's so cute! She's gonna put a flower crown on his head! Oh my god. It's a flower crown! I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head! Oh my god! I'm dead. Am I cool now? are the coolest! The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mmm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Oh. <laughs> hey, Pastel. This is my daughter. <laughs> Hello! Your dad is the cutest thing I've ever seen! <laughs> I'm Carmen Sita. <laughs> and he has great taste in names! Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Yeah. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. 
Yeah, actually, uh, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? Ah. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. <laughs> yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Ha ha ha, great seeing you! <laughs> Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Hmm? She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? What? <laughs> what? Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Whoa. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette, then flicks it into a gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable! Excuse me! Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. I am not gonna watch that disaster unfold, no sir! Hello, Ashley! Thank you for coming! Hugo marches over to Ernest, blah blah blah, yeah, we said that already. <laughs> Kids, right? Is Craig ever not walking around with his baby strapped to his chest? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. Hmm. <laughs> and the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half my yard too. Eh. Hugo walks back over to- Look at that kid! Look at his face! Look at that little shit. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind oh. him. Hey everybody, sorry about that. Pastel, this is my son, Ernest. Hello! Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Da 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 da. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Da 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 da. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ernest. <laughs> what grade are you in? <laughs> Does it matter? Oh. Oof. Ernest! Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. I mean, for a kid who like lit a yard on fire and is smoking a cigarette in front of his frickin' dad. In front of a yard full of dads. He's actually pretty smart. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts his earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm so sorry. He's having a really tough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. Oh. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Yes, you! You are a cool dad, Matt. Don't even, don't even pretend. Is it even possible to be a cool dad? Look at yourself! Of course it is! What? I'm cool as a cucumber! Hey. See, that right there. You can't say that. I don't know. <laughs> My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. Forever! You will always be cool dads in my heart. I, uh... Don't know. Hey! What was that voice? I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to iron unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Uh, Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. And she keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh, no. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, 
Look at me and Ernest. Ah. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. That is so true. That is so true, Hugo. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Hey. Don't let us eat up your time, Pastel. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Okay, uh, you all decide who I'm going to talk to next. I'm going to grab water real quick because for some reason I just keep forgetting that that's the thing I need when I do this. So put, it, put in the chat who you want to talk to. All right, so we've got two votes for Joseph Damien, one vote for Get a Burger. Any other thoughts, ideas, suggestions? Speak now or forever hold your piece of sweet, sweet daddy ass. Do, 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 do. Going once, going twice. Okay, and there is our tie. Also, for, for folks who are tuning in for the first time, we, uh, we, we don't necessarily have a majority rules rule in the chat. We have pretty much, if something gets three votes and is basically uncontested, it wins. So, Joseph and Damien. I spot Joseph chatting with a guy from Dead Goth and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. I feel like Joseph and Damien talking is going to be a really, really, really weird conversation. So, good choice. I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting choice. How delightful. Ah! <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Pastel! I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Oh. Hello, Damien. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Uh, I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. Oh, I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take my goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead, Goth, and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no way for such a gentleman to act. It's... it's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself! Are you new to the area? Yes! <laughs> my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Huh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who is hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Oh my. Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under anyone's specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leanings. Bats are cool, though. That's my girl. Hmm. Ah, pity. Oh. Are you enjoying the party so far? <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Huh? Amanda walks up to the conversation. Yes! Nicole, I, I love that idea. Um, also because, like, 
clearly Joseph and his family like have that exterior right of being like the very stereotypical suburban kind of you know he's got his cardigan and his polo thing going on but like the kids don't match up with us so like there's clearly something going on under the surface there whereas Damien is all performance like he is all about the performance of this darkness but I bet he's got a warm gooey center underneath all of that and so the combination of those two things is really really interesting Amanda walks up to the conversation I also like The Lost Boys a lot really good movie does that count as goth that it would my dear I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting Damien Bloodmarch, at your service. Oh my god, I love him so much. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Oh man! I love him! Uh. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Uh. My, you do know how to treat a lady. Hey. <laughs> oh my god, these kids. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Hey. Uh, hey. Won't you come play with us? Uh. Come play with us. Forever. Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Eh? We've talked about it, okay. So Joseph, Cla okay, so maybe Joseph, yeah, I know there's some, there's some like culty kind of stuff that you can get in the game if you want to, um, but not knowing, not knowing that information, Joseph really does kind of just seem like a guy who is just like super into the whole, like, you know, suburban thing. And his kids are just trying really hard to break out of that by being extremely unsettling. <laughs> Where do you think they got that from? Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. What is going on with her face? I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Oh I think it might have taped over from a, I think I might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Okay, so they watch VeggieTales, so like, and then the cross, right? So they're like, um, they're like super, Super religiously affiliated. Uh -huh. Where's Krish? Uh. Wasn't he with you? Didn't you? We were just looking for him. You had him a moment ago. Hmm. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Uh. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. I have squeezed four little. Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine. Mary? Ah. Okay, geez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. <laughs> Dad, can we go now? Huh. Oh, Lucian's his kid! Interesting. Ah, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Pastel yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Uh, Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Wow. Yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Wanna see mine? What? What? 
Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. Oh my god, Lucian, are you serious? Yeah, Damien, super not happy about that. Goth daddy on the outside, sweet squishy daddy on the inside. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Mm. So sick, Lucian. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. As a youth pastor, he would know. Man. Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Yes, I wonder indeed. Okay, so I think we should probably just go talk to Robert and Brian, right? I mean, we could grab a burger, but we've got one more conversation left, so we should probably just do that. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man. I don't think I want to deal with being one-upped by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Doot, doot, doot. Um, oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile <laughs> and walk over to them. Hey, guys? Uh. Bastel, how the heck are ya? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. Oh. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. <laughs> Bet you did, Brian. The game looks great in high def. Oh, boy. Huh. Bestel, have you met Robert yet? <laughs> yeah. We've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Ah. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. Maxwell is their corgi, by the way. Adorable. We patted his butt. It was great. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Yeah. It's good to see you talk taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside, making art. She won a local competition for, at, for that art. Yep, I remember because I showed you because I wanted to look cool in front of you. Uh -huh. Did I put it on too strongly? No such thing. No such thing when you're talking to Brian. Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Uh -huh. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Uh, same here. Well, things change once you have kit. Wait. What happened the last time? Oh. <laughs> oh. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the backcountry. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway. Things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the rope bridge snaps. Jesus Christ. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend, bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six-foot, 180-pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. Jesus Christ. I won't lie to you. There were moments during these two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy, but you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes a, another long sip of whiskey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went inner tubing down a river and he lost a flip flop. Miss that kid. So wait, so is Robert's whole thing just like, <laughs> like totally performative? 
Brian and I laugh nervously. Or am I kidding? Brian and I tense up again. What is going on? I'm kidding. Or are you? I don't know. Phew. Okay. Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck! <laughs> oh no, the ghost locked the doors! <laughs> Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons! Aww. Oh, then... Uh, hit the brake, I guess! Then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway... We're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. <laughs> oh, Daisy. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert! <laughs> Wait a second. Are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? <laughs> yeah! Amanda and I love that show! Yeah, we do! Uh. It's the best! Especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and. Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah! It is such quality reality television. These are things that happen in real life. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That, and war documentaries. <laughs> Alright, Daisy. I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. <laughs> Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Right. <laughs> okay, now you're getting the hang of it. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yeah. Now you're getting it. Oh, poor Daisy doesn't even know how to pretend because she has to do crazy stuff to make her dad proud of her. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Uh. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. <laughs> I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Uh. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Oh, yeah, because she's so much smarter than them, right, Brian? Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? <laughs> She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids, yep, I fucking knew it. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. Oh, come on, Brian, come on, Brian. Keep it in, keep it in just for once. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. I still do that sometimes, Amanda. She bit people, too. Uh -huh. Oh, ho, ho. kids, right? <laughs> Gotta love them. You're required to by law. I hear that. Uh. <laughs> well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh god, I can't say no. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. <laughs> and without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath. Oh my god, I thought he was gonna like actually like cast a spell or something. And gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I have ever seen. Oh. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. 
You probably didn't know this, Pastel, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Uh. He's on grillable. Here it is. Here it is. Barrage of dad puns. Hey. <laughs> I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Oh. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. <laughs> Mustard, we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? Oh. I've never seen him make a mistake. Mm. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Mm. Please stop. All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Oh, come on, you guys. This is quality punnage. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. <laughs> what are the odds? It's like somebody put us all here so that we would encounter each other. Hey, yeah. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Mm. <laughs> We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Mm? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. <laughs> hey, why don't you all add a, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? <laughs> dad Book? Mm. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Such as to ask you all on a date? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. I am telling you, th the guy that looks like this, he's got a Twitter, that's all I'm saying. He's got an Instagram, for sure. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. That's so nice. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Oh, I got an achievement! It says, welcome to the neighborhood. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. I feel like I was at a networking event. I wish I could have been playing paranormal ice road truckers. <clears throat> Woo. Um, uh, I mean, I, I felt like we had a good time, but maybe we didn't. I felt like I was at a networking event. I'm going to get LinkedIn notifications about out of this. I just know it. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Mm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on dad book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, dad. Yay! Hmm. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. That is so real, right? Every time there's any kind of like pre-arranged vegetable platter at a party, the cauliflower is the last to go, which is sad. Cauliflower is great. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, hmm. is that okay? Uh, of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. Those creepy twins are still out there. I will. Make good choices. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Oh. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that, and I will never do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something else to do. I'm gonna... <laughs> work on some stuff. See how long I can sleep for. Or throw a party. Mm. 
I'm gonna throw a party. A real rager. All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. I'll see if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's looking tight. And you might just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door. I'll get in no problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. Now watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I have never had lamb that I actually liked, and I don't know if that's a mistake on my part where I'm getting my lamb from or what, but I like most anything in this world, but lamb has never done it for me. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like, just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. <laughs> okay, challenge accepted. You make me some lamb that I like, and, um, I don't know, I'll reciprocate in some way. I knew, I knew I shouldn't have said that in front of you. Not that I'm not grateful, but I don't want to take advantage of your kindness and your skill. Man. Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of... socializing. <sighs> I check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. <sighs> Dad panic, Dad panic, Dad panic. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup. Sweetie, thank god you're safe. Aww. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I am really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Yeah. Oh, whoops, guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann! Mm. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Don't deflect, Amanda. This is serious. I don't like your attitude. I have a right to be concerned. I was scared. Help me, Dad. Help me, Dad. How do I, Dad? What should I say? To my daughter who just came home an hour and a half after curfew after ignoring all my text messages Remember, I mean I try to be a cool dad but I also worry <laughs> underground art ring I hope that's all it is she's not out without Noah is she so I gotta give somebody the shovel talk okay two say I was scared two say I have a right to be concerned so I need a tiebreaker Okay, I was scared. There's the tiebreaker. You weren't responding, and it was just... 
It was just like when your dad- Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I have to stop myself from tearing up. Oh. Dad. I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and I put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just... Please don't do that again. Uh. Well, what happened to our dad? Uh. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Oh no, we got sad. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? Oh, no! Oh, it got sad! I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Oh, the look on her face. Hey, I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it, and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Oh, she's so good. Well... Okay, I'm sorry for freaking out on you. I trust you to make good choices, or just a simple good. What do we say now? How do we dad? Okay, I trust you. One vote for I trust you. Two votes for I trust you. Three votes for I trust you. Okay, there it is. Our not so majority majority. I also thought about it and I'll try to give you your space from here on out. I gotta trust that you can take care of yourself. Aww. Team Gato. Team Gato. Yay! <laughs> Team Gato! Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? <laughs> you know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Right. Team Gato, fist pump! Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs and the time it takes me to wash the pan. All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. It's a school day? Interesting. Wait. One more thing before you go. Mm -hmm. What? What's dad book? Dad. It's a social media platform. Wait. Huh? What? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. I love how it's like all about this, like, I trust you to make good choices and you're a really good student, but Wait, don't go to school yet. I have to set up my dad book. Hmm. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Ugh. Okay, chat, get ready, because when we set up the dad book profile, we have a lot of choices to make, and I'm going to defer to you. So get ready to make a lot of choices. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Aww. All right, pops, we got to fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Okay. Question number one for our dad book profile. On Friday night, you are most likely to polish and sort my coin collection, Netflix and grill, baby, fall asleep watching the History Channel, torment my children with dad puns, or sink into blissful oblivion. And I like how in the parentheses it says sleep so that you know that that's what that means. Okay, chat, this is all you. What are we, what is our dad most likely to do on a Friday night? Okay, one vote for dad puns, two votes for dad puns, three votes for dad puns, four votes for dad puns. There it is, torment my children with dad puns. Okay, excellent. Question number two. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? My trusty grill, the lost shaker of salt. The Jimmy Buffett is like very strong in this one too. K 
Castaway on DVD for instructional purposes. A boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. See, my question about the castaway option is if we bring the DVD, what do we watch the DVD on? So, that's all I'm saying. Three votes for boat! Yeah, everybody <laughs> everybody's really committed to him being a really, like, a very smart dad, like a very logical dad, too. This man could not survive on an island. <laughs> how, how, would, how would he re-dye his hair? It would, it would grow out and his roots would be all dark. It'd be bad. It'd be bad news bears. <laughs> You just stare at the DVD. You stare at the DVD and it, you draw a face on the DVD and it becomes the new, the new Wilson. Okay, a uh, boat obviously won. A boat, obviously. Question number three. What are your turn-ons? Strong dad arms. Tennis shoes with long white socks. A well-manicured lawn. Street smarts. Top-tier grillmanship. Or being comfortable with crying. What turns our dad on? It could be used as a cutting in implement. Yeah. Ingenuity with the DVD. Okay. Two votes for crying. Three votes for crying. This is why you all are my friends. I totally feel that. I want, I want a dad who is comfortable with his emotions. Yeah. Butts. I, if if butts was an option, Ashley, believe you me, I wouldn't have even asked anybody for their opinion. Comfortable with crying. Wins out by a majority. Those street smarts is a valuable skill as well. What did you want to be when you grew up? Tech, technical writer for manuals and instructionals. Salty, salty, I almost said salty butt captain. Thank you, chat. Salty butt captain. Salty boat captain. Pro skater, who is also an astronaut. A good father. The president of space. President of space. Technical writer, okay. <laughs> Two votes for president of space. One vote for technical writer. Three votes for president of space. I feel so fucking <laughs> But well, okay, we know what we want. We know what Nicole's dad would have wanted to would have wanted to be uh, president of space. Yeah, president of space, who is also a good father, and also technically writes uh, writes writes technical manuals. Right? Okay, president of space. What's your favorite movie genre? <laughs> War documentaries. Uh, war documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography. I mean, yes, because that includes the James Bond movies, but no, because he's an asshole. Anything on Laserdisc, why is that even an option? What, the, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, or old comedies that haven't aged well. What kind of movies does our dad like, chat? Sean Connery. <laughs> I mean, it, that's a that's a very dad option. Okay, one vote for Sean Connery, one vote for old comedies. <laughs> Amazing. No, yes, yes. What what makes you feel seen in the <laughs> in these options? Oh man. Okay, so we've got three votes for old comedies. We have a vote for rom coms. Ooh, okay. Romantic comedies and old com oh, old comedies has three, two votes for rom-coms. I think old comedies did win out the majority. We're gonna be democratic, we're gonna be democratic. What is your ideal date? Napping together, see that makes me feel seen. Doing a 1,000 piece puzzle together. Eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m. Oh my God, I've never felt more unseen by something. Trying to geocache, but getting hopelessly lost. Arson. Or being emotionally vulnerable. What's our ideal date? I don't, I mean, being emotionally vulnerable is like, not really a date. We just meet somewhere and <laughs> the puzzle. <laughs> I 
feel like th I feel like there's something on this list for everybody who is in the chat right now. Like everybody who is involved in this moment in time and space. There's something on here for one for at least one of us. Okay, two votes. Two votes for nap. Three three votes for nap. Actually, all of it except arson is me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nap nap. Nap nap napping napping one. Oh, puzzles. Oh. Doing a puzzle and then taking an episode. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Nap did technically did technically one win our majority, so we'll do napping. But the puzzle is also very tempting. What do you never leave home without? A sensible cardigan. <laughs> My sick vape, bro. My book of word jumbles and a pen. Oh, oh my heart. A, a cool knife. My cripplingly low self-esteem. Oh no. I frequently forget my phone, keys, and wallet at home sometimes. That's it. I'm not picking this one, but I'm just saying that if we're talking about being seen, that's me. That's it. That's right there. <laughs> Gotta have my vape, bruh. <laughs> Oh god, I'm so I'm calling myself out and feeling externally called out at the same time. Okay, so we've got a vote for word jumbles. We have another vote for the forgetful. We have okay, two votes for word jumbles, three votes for word, word jumbles, and then two votes for for forgetful. Well, yeah, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna go with word jumbles. It seems like that is getting the majority, and it is so cute. My book of word jumbles and a pen. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. How proud I am of my child. Potential ends of the world. Okay, can we lighten up a little bit, kids? Jesus. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. When I can next get a cup of coffee. Or lawnmower modifications. This is maybe the strangest collection of options we have seen so far. Okay, team. What does our dad spend a lot of time thinking about? I mean, yeah, yeah. How proud we are of, of Amanda, right? Yeah, two votes for two votes for proud, being proud of our child. <laughs> Nicole, I knew you would. I knew you would. Child coffee, damn good coffee. It's really good. Okay, two votes for coffee. Three votes for coffee. Three votes for our child. Is there anybody who hasn't weighed in yet? You will be our tiebreaker. Okay, how proud I am of my child. Mm, profile complete! Yay! Good job, team! Ah. I trust all of you. Your votes got us eggplants from Craig last night, so I trust all of you. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, it's actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. Hey. You should mesh with one of them. Or more than one of them. All these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay. I promise I'll make some friends. Huh. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get them, dad. Oh, oh, I am gonna get them. Hey, look at all of the dads. Look at all of our dads. Okay, uh, so this is the point at which we start to um, go on dates. So um, whoever we pick now, we will go on a date. And then that's basically, I think, how the game progresses from here on out is that we go on a date with somebody, we come back, we check dad book, and then we just keep going on dates. So chat, who are we going on our first date with? And then I think, but the, the amount of time that, that dates take, I think we'll have enough for two dates today. So we can do two dates with the same person, or we can do a date with someone and a date with somebody else. But I think, I think two dates is as much as we can get done by 3.30. Um, so yeah, so, so, so vote, 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 vote. Who are we going on a date with? <laughs> two votes for Hugo, three votes for Hugo. Also, I'd like to put my vote in for um, keeping it light and creepy. Keep it light, keep it creepy. Hugo, 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 Hugo. Okay, this is an overwhelming majority who wants to go on a date with Hugo because, like, look at him. 
Look at him! Oh gosh! I mean, like they—they've all—they've all got their charms, but in terms of dad book photos, mm, Hugo's got a nice headshot. Okay, here we go. Let's—we gotta take a look at his profile first. So, Hugo Vega, middle school teacher, high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles on 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. Oh, Hugo! If you're on here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know. And I'm sorry. Oh, oh, God. On a Friday night, you are most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my miniatures. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? A Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. Oh, my God. He's so good. What are your turn-ons? Muscles. Really? I mean, that's fine. But I didn't expect that. What did you want to be when you grew up? A movie star? Well, look at that face. He could do it. Hugo could do it. Uh, what's your favorite movie genre? Documentaries on heart, on documentaries on art history. Yes, me too, Hugo. I love documentaries. Le legitimately, I actually do very much love documentaries. It's like the easiest way to learn something. What's your ideal date? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the counts in comfortable silence. Oh, Hugo. Out of my heart. What do you never leave home without? My glasses. Actually, I forget them at home a lot. My man. I spend a lot of time thinking about... I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. That's it. I quit the game. I quit. We're just, this is it. We don't need to do, we don't need to go on any other dates. We don't need to do anything else. We just need to be with Hugo. Oh my God. Whew. I'm, get, I'm getting the vapors. Whew. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. Okay. Whew. It's a, it's a little worm in here, you guys. Okay. Let's message him. Oh, I'm like actually nervous. Like I actually feel like first date nervous. Oh my God, I can't handle this. Oh my God. Whew. I navigate to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. See, we have to think very hard about this because it needs to be grammatically correct. It needs to, you know, there's a lot of things that have to go into talking to Hugo. Uh, hey, Hugo. Great seeing you at the barbecue. Want to hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. What? What happened? Okay. I'm so glad you messaged me, and I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones is sick. Uh... Is there any possible way you could come by and... I'm assuming that says chaperone them or something. Uh, come by and uh, chaperone them? Uh-oh. Oh, replace them. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. It's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for and they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Yeah. The worst age for everybody, including the middle schoolers. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Oh no, Amanda. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. I had to burp again. Hey, are you all right? I'm fine. Oh. Of course. I'm fine. I just got to thinking about the Backstreet Boys. They had a reunion. The Backstreet Boys are back, all right. But they're different. Something's wrong with them. Like, they're a dream someone once had, but can no longer remember. And no one's talking about it. They just go on like everything's normal. Okay, so, you know, I have the opportunity here to kind of go along with the with the ruse and also make a really excellent song reference or you know we could try to get to the bottom of what's going on 
So what should we say? I'm leaving this up to you all because I know that we all love Hugo, but the only person we all love more collectively is Amanda. So what do we say to our poor sad daughter? Okay, one vote, two votes for Are You Sure? I definitely want to pick the, I know, I really want to pick the last one too, but I don't want to like, I don't want to help her deflect if she needs to talk. All right, three vote majority. So we're going with, are you sure? Four votes, great. If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you and I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I am only a phone call away. Hmm. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I am unconvinced. Yes, I, I, real me, is also unconvinced. But I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Or maybe she won't, because that's what kids do. Wow. Hey! How was middle school for you? Ugh. <laughs> bad. But nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Yeah. <sighs> totally. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top, top 40s pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. <laughs> Funny you should say that. What was your middle school experience like? Uh, I don't remember. I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. I didn't like it. Who liked middle school? No, middle school is terrible for everybody. We don't get a choice in this. I had my first crush in middle school and I am still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me and I'll never forget. <laughs> What'd she do to you? I stare off into middle distance remembering the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remembered the bitter betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham, him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. See, middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, uh, Mr. Vega requested my help in to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. I just wanted to know what I was in for. Hmm. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Hmm. The last field trip I got to go on was to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Uh oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? Ah. No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen. Oh my God, that is disgusting. Oh. It haunts me. Yeah, it would haunt me too. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Uh. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What, are you worried that a whale is gonna pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Yeah, kind of a little bit, Amanda. Don't you put fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. <laughs> then it's settled. Penguins outweigh fear of the ocean. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. <laughs> I, I am definitely available for you, Hugo. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. Oh, the headphones are ah, making my ears hurt. <laughs> I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wits end. Eh. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! Uh. <laughs> it's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded and most of the kids won't stop screaming as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I lived through Amanda at 12. I am all too familiar. Hmm. Great, well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. 
Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Oh. Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. They then go back to texting. Oh, do tell Brianna, what is your what is your assessment? I don't think any of the people who made this game are or have been teachers. Um, and I definitely don't think they, none of them are definitely old enough to have middle schoolers as children. So tell me what you think. At least they're quiet. Hmm. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school after all. Oh. We'll see. Hmm. The classes start filing into the aquarium and Hugo hands out a massive stapled packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Mm. Honestly, it's just busy work so that the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for ten minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? <laughs> no! No busy work! You know who Hugo could use a couple tips from? Craig. Craig has a very good handle on child-centric pedagogy, as we saw yesterday. Hmm? We just did a unit on the old man and the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. But he's so dreamy. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, <laughs> Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Okay, Hugo's like classroom behavior aside, we, our first date is at the aquarium and he's gonna tell me facts about fish. Ah. I'm in love. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? I did not know that. I did not know that. Mm. Whoa, their spines are venomous too. Nature is hardcore. Oh. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy looking fish hanging out near the bottom mm. of the tank. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just like, Keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless, so long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Hmm? Tissue necrosis. Cool. Hmm. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Oh, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, we're gonna make an idiot of ourselves. Hey, see that fish over there? Oh. That one? Yeah, that's the, uh, oh, <laughs> the American longfin, the blue-nosed wiggly fish, or the humphead wrens. <laughs> okay, chat, it's all up to you. What fish are we about to start talking about? The wiggly fish. Light and creepy for the win, yes, definitely. The wiggly fish, okay, one vote for wiggly fish. Two votes for Wigglyfish. One vote for Longfin. Do, 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 do. Three votes for Wigglyfish. Okay. Three votes clinches the response. The blue nose Wigglyfish. Okay, we got hearts. That's good. That's good. But we want eggplants. We want eggplants. Yeah. Did you know that? Okay, do we give him paranormal fish trivia? Do we give him psychiatric fish trivia? Do we give him political fish trivia? Now, I'm not saying we have to pick responses in the hopes that we will get eggplants from him. We can pick whatever you think is entertaining or you want to see, but just want you to know, 
that some eggplants would be nice. One vote for paranormal and one vote for political. Two votes, three votes, okay. Three votes for paranormal, one vote for political, and one vote for psychiatric, so paranormal wins paranormal fish trivia. This fish sleeps upside down, but contrary to popular belief, is not an actual vampire. That's the vampire fish. Oh. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> Do we commit? Should we commit to our paranormal fish trivia? I think we should, but I'll defer to you. I will defer. Okay, okay. Two absolutely nots. Three absolutely nots. Two... Okay. Oh, no! Mm. I need a tiebreaker. Okay, we'll say no. We'll say no. Hugo doesn't like jokes. So... Hmm. But if we commit... Okay, we're gonna commit. We're gonna commit. We're talking fish here. There's no time for jokes. Hmm. Oh, no! Come on, Hugo! You know, I'm... I'll be honest with you. I'm glad that we did that. I'm glad that we did that because I, I do love Hugo. He's captured a majority of my heart, but come on. That was a funny joke. It's just fish, Hugo. Lighten up. That's a clown fish. Mm, right. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive floor-to-ceiling aquarium. These kids begin to try to take selfies with the sharks. Which, you know, you do you. Sharks are terrifying. But also, like, yeah, who doesn't want a selfie with a shark, right? Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room, reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside of the enclosure. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry, hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. He's totally gonna notice. Wow. Ah. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? <gasps> oh, 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 I'd rather stare at you. Or, we can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Or, are those two sharks kissing? Okay, what do we do? I, I mean, we could try to level with him. We could try to be really serious, really devoted to our uh, awe at the ocean. Or... He, he's a teacher! Learn! <laughs> I really appreciate the commitment to, like, you know, what does he want you to say? Okay. We're gonna flirt. We're gonna flirt with him. We're just gonna go for it. You know what? We're just gonna go for it. But also, I would absolutely just, just talk about the sharks kissing. But we're, we're gonna flirt with him. We're gonna do it. I'd rather stare at you. Wh what? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Hugo turns bright red. Maybe I put it on too thick. I mean, I'd rather not stare at you at all. Oh no. Oh, that's not how you that's not how you recover from that. Hugo looks confused. Great save, Pastel. God damn it. I mean, uh, never mind. Forget I said anything. I am suddenly very sweaty. I search around for a fish tank to dunk my head into to cool down. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. 
Yeah, it was- yeah, we should totally should have talked about the sharks. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand into the water. Goodness gracious, Hugo, just going for it. Don't you want to pet some rays, Pastel? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun! And informative! Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling that they will probably bite me and my delicious hands if given the chance. <laughs> Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat the little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank. Slowly dipping my hand into the cold water, I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Something is about to happen. Something terrible is about to happen. Not so bad. Feels like fun, slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn about them. When you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Okay, so he just wants to take it slow, I guess? Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. <laughs> Sorry, I just get a little carried away sometime. Wait, that girl over there looks suspicious. Suspicious? Why's that? Oh. Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on! Susan! Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. We don't have time for games here. That's an easy five to ten in the clink. Or I'm the- okay, well that's- okay, that's not an option. I'm just throwing that out there. We are not gonna threaten to hit this kid. So, uh, which of these two options do we want to choose? No games coming from the actual public school teacher. <laughs> But the chat is leaning towards the five to ten in the clink. No time for games. I think I will defer to teacherly wisdom. Yay, we got hearts! Whatever it is, it goes back into the touch tank. Now. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Hmm? Yes, well, can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Sweet Manchego! <laughs> Sweet Manchego! Hugo leans in and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, swoops it up, scoops it up, and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Well, I don't know what you want me to say. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he was gonna die? Hmm. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah. And hands where we can see him. Susan skulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> he touched my shoulder. Huh. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. <laughs> or the last. 
In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater, I thought that said beautiful underwear, beautiful underwater plant life surround us. Ah. Look over there! Hugo points, so some, Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of a tank. One of them is one of, one of them is in the middle of giving birth. Oh. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on their phones. Okay, I will contest that. That is complete crap. You tell a room full of 12 year olds that something is doing something gross with its body, they are gonna pay attention. Hey. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. <laughs> Man, we thought we had it hard. Hey. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years too. All, however, many thousand of them. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Oh. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as I can whenever, whenever I can. That is my boy. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Put it on a plaque, hang it in the middle of the world. Because if you stop learning, you, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. <laughs> we'll get there. That's, that's hopeful. It means we're going to keep hanging out and talking. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Oh. <laughs> yes, we get to see the penguins. <laughs> Hell yes. Oh, look at that one sliding down the little slide. Mm, they're so cute. Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. Okay, I do love penguins, but puffins are the cutest animal. Well, maybe not the cutest animal, but puffins are super, super cute. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. What? I mean, except for the part where a kid tried to smuggle a horseshoe crab in her backpack. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god. There's a student in the penguin enclosure! Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. Is it one of ours? <sighs> it most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. Birds of a feather, right? I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. What kind of shit ass aquarium is this where you can climb into the penguin enclosure? This is not our fault. I'm just saying. Over on one side of the enclosure, I see the door to the I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the We gotta stop her before the staff sees and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. Mm. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. <sighs> everybody, everybody, everybody! I have an announcement! What the fuck is he gonna say? The whole room turns toward Hugo. Uh, um uh. Here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and am greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst! Hey! The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you! I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. <sighs> Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured because how could you not be by that face? Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. 
Where are they even going to go? They're gonna live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. Hmm. Little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions. So they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Okay, what do we do? Lay down the law, try to relate to her, or we bribe her. What do we do? Time is ticking, Hugo is running out of penguin facts, and we gotta get this kid out of the enclosure before anybody notices. So what do we do? What do we do? We have some, we drink some water. If you haven't drunk any water, drink water, stay hydrated. Okay. Two votes for relate, one vote for bribe. All right. Three votes for relate, three, three votes for bribe. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have, we are actually legitimately equally split, split in what we're gonna do, either bribe or relate. That kid, yeah, you're right. That kid is totally not gonna listen to the law, but I also sort of feel like maybe, I think, I don't know, I don't know if this affects, I don't know if this affects our relationship with Hugo. I don't know that Hugo would necessarily approve of me bribing her, but also we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Oh, this is really hard. Um, uh, okay, uh, let's try it, let's try it this way, let's try it this way. I think back to the time I released all of the feeder mice from the pet store. It was a disaster. I was six, but it was a disaster. Molly, you know, life can be cruel. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Should've just fucking bribed her. Money, give me money. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well I have $12 and some change. Also there's a button here, is that enough? Pay me the other eight later and we have a deal. We move to shake on our arrangement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block these birds. Oh no, it's a mini game. Oh no, oh no. How? Oh my god, okay. Ah, oh. What the hell? No! No! This is really hard. They don't do anything. Do I, am I gonna run out of hands? The hand doesn't do anything! I am just frantically clicking. Oh my god, thank god you have like infinite hands, otherwise we would be fucked. No! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! When is this gonna be over? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Woo! Oh god! Jesus Christ, I thought it was over! What? What? Okay? I don't know what that means. I've, I've also- I've seen some of the other, uh, some, some of the other minigames that you play. Um in the game, uh, like every date I think has a mini game. They are really hard. They are super, super hard. And I mean, partially because they kind of are like built really crappily. Okay, whew, glad that's over. Just in time too. Looks like Hugo is wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. Ah. And that's why I think that penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs over. Uh. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. 
You realize that the penguins can only survive in arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Molly is training to be like a PETA activist who doesn't really understand what they're doing, but thinks it's righteous. Well, um, it was the thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. Whoa. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan, I suppose so that they can compare animal thief notes. Ah. You're not off the hook, Molly. Hmm. Pastel, did you just bribe a child? I knew he wouldn't like that. I knew it. <laughs> okay, team. What do we say? We just totally got caught. I bribed the child. We just, do we just fess up? Do we, we, I don't, th I'm going to say I don't think we should deny. Right? Like, I don't think we should deny what we did. Um, we could kind of make a joke, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, I, I'm leaning towards we should probably just be honest. But, th this is the, okay, this is the difficulty that I always have in role play games is like, what, what can I say that will get the result that I want to get? versus what would my character actually say which i think my character would actually say this do you know what i mean but i i do think you're right that he would prefer if we were just blatantly honest and this is the problem i always have in role playing games where you have to like get approval from other characters it's it's just like i want to i want to effectively role play but i also don't want to screw everything up um penguins 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 um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do what I think Hugo would appreciate us doing. It was the only way to get her out of the exhibit. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of it either. Or of my penguin facts lecture. But at least we got her out. Okay, good. Okay, we got hearts. We got hearts. No eggplants, but we got hearts. So, yeah, you're right. Somebody, uh, I don't remember who said, but somebody said that maybe you can't get eggplants from Hugo on the first date because he wants to take it slow. So I'm going to assume that that's true, and I'm going to celebrate. Celebrate the hearts that we get. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. I agree with that, Hugo. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop, and we make our way out to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium, as we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Mm. Hey, Pastel, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. Yeah, it was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Hey. <laughs> Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? Ha! Huh! Do I? <laughs> I love cheese boards. I'm all about cheese boards. There is nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. I mean, these are all in favor of cheese boards. But what is the, what's the tone? What's the tone that we want to move forward with? Yeah, right? Like, Hugo just, Hugo gets you on a visceral level. There's nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. I'm all about cheese boards. Last one. Okay. Keep weighing in. Ah, oh, we're splitting. We're splitting our vote. Okay, two votes for I love cheese boards. And then two votes for nothing on earth. Okay, so yeah, there it is. Tiebreaker, thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Yes! Yes! We did it! We did it! Oh, thank you, chat! <laughs> Great! Well, I gotta go make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. Oh, oh, yes you will, Hugo. Alright! That went really well-ish. I mean, not so good at the beginning, but we got- we got- we got eggplants. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. Huh. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. 
Some kid tried to steal a penguin. Aww. We've all been there. Have we? Have we, Amanda? I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. All right. You got to go into the em penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. <laughs> I'm surprised he helped complete a co covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of a what? Uh. Kind of a stick in the mud? He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. All right, too much adventure for me today. I'm going to go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? Look at, look at, it's dark outside, Amanda. We're not taking a nap. We're going to bed. There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. I agree. I am not a father, but yes, there is a difference between resting your eyes and taking a nap. Oh, interesting. A plus. Oh, oh, we got an A. Yay. Good job. Good job, team. So like, oh, okay, so fiscal responsibility, embarrassed child, theft. Huh. I wonder if these are actually, like, measuring, because, like, what the hell is mustache? So I don't think there's actually measuring anything. We got an A, so that's good. I think th this is the highest grade that you can actually get is an S. So we didn't do the best that we could have done, but we did really well, and I'm very proud of us. Good job, team. Oh, my, I got an achievement that says Asiago Getter. <laughs> Colin was one of the students, right? I think Colin was one of the students who was doing something, I think. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail oh, blah, blah. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. <laughs> hey, my coupons! Take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Yes. Immediately, Amanda pushes the, her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? <laughs> I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Mm. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. Okay, this is the other thing, too. Do any, do, do any of y'all remember when you were waiting to get college acceptance letters? And it was like, you knew immediately whether it was an acceptance or not, because if it was just a regular envelope with a letter in it, it was a rejection. But if you actually were accepted, it was usually a bigger envelope because they had like all of your application, your like acceptance materials and like maps and stuff. So like, you knew, you knew as soon as you got the mail, what was inside the envelope. I hand her the envelope, but she tears open with her teeth because she is my daughter. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds oh. it. And the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this. What, what, what? Oh, honey, it's, it's okay if you didn't. Yeah. I got in! Yay! <laughs> oh, congratulations, Amanda. Oh, I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. Oh, I'm so happy for her. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh, my God. I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview. And your photography is incredible. Uh. Wait, Dad. <sighs> I know this one's really expensive. And it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. 
Amanda hugs me again. Of course, you're my little girl. Of course, we're gonna make it work. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, whatever you want. Hmm. Wherever. Oh, 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 I love this. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Do you think we're in California? We're in California, right? I think that I think that's the suggestion by the, the landscape. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. Can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there's all these galleries nearby and there's a discount if you bring your student ID and Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. Oh, yes, it could be Miami. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors and we get all the professional photo editing software for free? It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. Oh, give her a break. Etiquette doesn't count when you're excited. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. And even more. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Huh? Oh no. I'm just kidding, we didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Ah. Carl ruled. Yes. Ooh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh boy, I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to get real for a second. So, you know that, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? N no. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Oh, Amanda! <laughs> My eyes immediately well up with tears. Hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Don't roll your eyes at me, Amanda. This is an emotional moment. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. Too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad... I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. You guys. Welcome. You've got dads. <laughs> that was so nice. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. That took way so much longer than I thought it would. I thought the dates would only last for maybe a half an hour tops. Um, which I think Hugo's actually did, but then, you know, the scene with Amanda. Um, so, it's about, it's just about 3.30 now, which is when I said that the stream would end. Um, so, I don't know, it's it's a kind of up to the rest of us if we want to keep going or not. Um, I, could, I could probably do one more date um, if we want to. Um, so, I'm going to take a quick, I'm going to take a quick break like i'm just gonna get some more water um and just in the in the chat let me know if you would stick around for one more date or or if we should cut it off here okay okay all right
right, let's see what everybody said. Looks like... Hmm. Looks to me like the mats have it. So, that's what we're doing. Let's go on a date with Matt. And they fix, they fix my hair real quick. Oh. Okay. Here we go. First, we have to read Matt's profile. Matt Sella. Avid music enthusiast. Passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the Coffee Spoon. Or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no-wave music. Oh, I will definitely do that, Matt. On a Friday night, you are most likely to perfect my cold brew setup. One drip at a time, baby. See, you are a professional babysayer, Matt. Okay, you were so worried when we first met you about your use of the word baby and whether it was awkward. It's not. Clearly, you are a seasoned pro. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? Fine tunes to pass the days away. How much you want to bet Matt plays the guitar? I'm just saying. What are your turn-ons? Multi-instrumentalism. Yeah, I feel that. What did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. Interesting. Did anybody ever actually really want to be a barista when they were younger? Well, I'm, let's, uh, I don't know. It's interesting, I think, like, generationally. Maybe, like, people who were children, like, people who were born probably, I guess, like, maybe, I want to say, like, 98 or later, um, <laughs> probably know what a barista is, and maybe that is, but, like, yeah, wanted to be a waitress, or, like, I, I really wanted to be a cashier at the supermarket when I was, like, six. I thought that sounded like the best job in the world. I don't know why, but, like, I didn't know, yeah, like, I didn't know what a barista was when I was a kid, so to say I wanted to be a barista when I grew up, that wouldn't have been possible, but I wonder, I think now, generationally, probably, like, that, that is maybe, like, the new generation's version of, like, wanting to be a waitress. That's good. No, that's good. That's good to, like, from a young age, know that, um, you know, have the ambition to want to own a business. That's pretty sweet. I don't know why. I was, like, my mom, I guess my mom one day asked me, like, you know, just, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, you know, parents just make conversation with their kids. And I remember very distinctly saying, like, I'm going to be a cashier at Pathmark. And I was so committed to that. What is your ideal date? We go to the animal shelter and seriously consider adopting a cat. Yep. Yep. I feel seen. Tremendously. What do you never leave home without? My headphones, both in-ear and over-ear, just in case. Also true. Also so true. I spent a lot of time thinking about... Where did writing commas into song titles come from, and where did it go? Did we all just agree that it's a bad idea? I've actually literally never had that thought. That thought has literally never crossed my mind. Interesting, Matt. I do like your fashion sense, too. All right, let's message our good friend, Matt. Dad tip number 46, do it once, do it right. Sounds like a dad tip to me. I navigate to Matt's dad book page and type out a message. Hey man, great getting to see you at the BBQ. We should definitely hang soon. You free later? A minute or two later, I hear a ding and see Matt's response. Hey dude, I'd be so down for that. I'm actually catching a show tonight at the Soundgarden. Wanna come out? I think for a moment. What's a Soundgarden? It's the name of the band, right? It's that they, um, oh god, I'm gonna really make an ass of myself. What song did Soundgarden do? Was it Black Hole Sun? Was that Soundgarden? It's a concert venue, but also a band that a lot of people listened to back when it was cool to have soul patches. Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since Amanda was born. Am I ready for this? While I'm thinking, another message pops up on the screen. Pop is playing tonight. Pop? Cool little indie pop punk rock band out of Canada. Should be a fun one. I didn't know you were allowed to string that many words together to describe a band. Cool little indie pop punk rock. 
whatever. Let's get out of our comfort zone. We went to the we went to the aquarium. We faced our fear of the ocean. Let's go to the sound garden. I log off dad book and think for a second. Wait, when was the last time I went to a concert? I mentally backtrack decades through memories of denim jean jackets and moral panic over teenagers turning to the occult. Oh god, I had a mullet back then. Oh god, I thought it was cool. Oh god, other people thought it was cool. I finally remember the strange 80s prog rock I used to listen to and mentally envision all of the airbrushed vans in the parking lot. Man, how did anyone survive the 80s? Okay, so I haven't been to a concert in a long time. What do you even do at concerts now? I spend most of the day pacing around the house and thinking about my relationship with coolness. I mean, I always thought I was cool, at least relative to a bunch of other dads my age. Dad, what are you doing? I look over and see Amanda at the door, just getting home from school. Ah. Anyway, what's up? Hmm? Amanda, how do I be cool? Hmm. Let me put on a pot of coffee first. This is going to be a long night. No, seriously. Matt invited me to a concert, and I don't think I've been to one since you were born. Dad. Yeah, you have. You took me to one once when I was 12, remember? I'm suddenly overwhelmed by the memory of a sea of screaming preteens. Oh. Oh, God. I tried so hard to forget. The one where I had to camp out with you in line so that you could get a good spot, and then you cried and screamed the whole time? Dad, it was so much more than that, and I'm not even ashamed to say it. Oh, you're not ashamed? You seemed pretty ashamed when I found all those drawings you made of those dancing boys kissing in your Trapper Keeper. <laughs> trapper Keeper. Oh, so dated. Yeah, well, you didn't even find the good stuff. Ooh. I want to find Amanda's AO3 profile. Anyway, you should be all set for the concert if you remember if you remember that. Just bring a big glittery sign and cry a lot and you'll fit right in. Well, it's at a smaller place, and I think Matt mentioned that they're a punk band? Mm -hmm. Like DIY glitter punk, thrash, straight edge? Come on, Dad, give me something to work with here. Mm -hmm. Are they post-punk, proto-punk, C-punk, Jeremy punk? What? <laughs> What's Jeremy punk? I made that one up just to see if I could get away with it. Mm. They're not positive hardcore, are they? Okay, I don't actually even know what those words mean. Um, he said that they're Canadian punk? Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Does the idea of Canadian punk seem contradictory to you? I don't see friendship and politeness as the core tenets of the punk scene. If you think about it, it actually, well, maybe not politeness, but friendship, the good kind of punk scene that you should be a part of, friendship is absolutely one of the core tenets. Hmm. Well, punk is kind of a big genre that might not be as dangerous as you think it is. It became so much more than just counterculture rebellion. What I'm trying to say is just enjoy the music. That's it? Hmm. Just enjoy the music? That's all you have for me? I mean, yeah, it's not like you're going to jump into a mosh pit or anything. Well, that's comforting. And if a strange dude in a set your goals hoodie offers to buy you merch, don't accept it. And definitely don't go on three awful dates with him afterward where he takes you to a nice restaurant and then forgets his wallet literally three times in a row. Oh, Amanda. What? Oh. Never mind. Just have a blast tonight. Amanda, come on. Love yourself. Do better than that. I show up at the coffee spoon at eight in what I hope is concert appropriate attire. How is the how is my dad's outfit not concert appropriate? It's my dad's attire is the most appropriate attire for any event. I mean, seriously. I see Matt out front locking the door to the shop. Hey, yeah. hey you made it. Ready for tonight? Well, it's been a while. Yes, of course. I definitely know what I'm talking about. Ready. I was born ready. Okay, Chad, help me out. We know these date dialogues um, contribute to our grade, the grade that we get at the end of our date, so I'm going to need your help to figure out what to say. Okay. 
One vote for Born Ready. One vote for... Well, it's been a while. There's, like, very little music, which is ironic, considering what kind of date we're on, but... I wonder if we're gonna get to hear the music that this band supposedly plays. Okay. It's been a while wins the vote. It's been a while. It's Britney, bitch. Oh man, I gotta admit, haven't been to a real concert since Pet Rocks were cool. I have no idea what I'm in for. Hey. Did your daughter make you make you take her to one of those boy band concerts where everybody holds signs and scream cries? Yep. Hey. I got two lined up next month. Still can't get the glitter out of my car from the last one. Stay strong. Hey. Stay strong, Dad. But dude, I get to take you to your first concert in a long time? This is gonna be awesome. Just hang with me, Pastel, and you'll be good. This scene is super supportive. It'll be a blast. Quick question! Oh. Shoot. What is... scene? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry, it's just weird because scene can describe a music scene as it pertains to a community of people who like the same genre, but it can also describe a genre of music no one wants to admit they were into. Matt looks off into middle distance. He says nothing, but I can tell he's thinking, never again. That is confusing. Hey. You'll get it. The important thing tonight is that you enjoy yourself. Come on. Let's head to the show. Let's head to the show. Oh my god, this place really is very small. As After waiting in a short line to get in, we finally find ourselves in a small venue with a stage at one end and a bar at the other. Most people here are closer to Amanda's age than mine. I suddenly feel very out of place. My waning youth is showing. I am suddenly aware of my mora- <laughs> I'm suddenly aware of my mortality. When were the good years of my life? Will Amanda still love me as we grow older? Wait, is sea punk actually a genre? Matt, you made it! I don't know who that is, so I don't know what voice to do. Oh, a younger kid runs up and high fives Matt. The kid runs off and Matt turns to me, shuddering. I get nervous when people surprise high five me. Yeah, I don't blame you, dude. Me too. Hey. I'm like a small animal. Loud noises and large groups of people frighten me. Do you also enjoy curling up in a patch of sunlight to take a nap? I mean, who doesn't? That's my favorite thing to do. Oh, I think Matt might be the daddy for us, y'all. A couple other people notice that Matt's in the crowd and yell, hey, as well. Hey. Matt waves and hugs a couple people. <laughs> he seems really in his element here. Hey. Matt turns his attention back to me. I am so afraid of all these people. Oh. Let's go grab a beer. Matt and I line up at the bar in the back, where a couple of the older concert goers hang out. A couple more people notice Matt and tip their drinks at hey. him. <laughs> Seems like you're a popular guy out here. Hey. Oh yeah, I go to a lot of shows. This is a really cool spot. Oh. Mm. Delicious water. But it's times like these where I realize I can only be charming and funny for about five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about. Hey. And then I become keenly aware of where my hands are and that there's no comfortable place in your mouth for your tongue to rest. Matt knows me. Matt gets me. Matt is me. God damn it, where do I put my tongue? Hey. See? Well, I've known you for more than five minutes and I still think you're charming and funny. Oh, 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 <laughs> Just you wait. We grab our drinks. This scene seems really friendly. I don't know why people wouldn't want to admit that they listen to it. <laughs> ha! Let's check out the merch. Oh. Oh, who, who are you, my friend? Goodness gracious. That's a teenager? Okay. 
Matt and I walk over to a small booth in the corner in a corner of the room where a crusty looking te he does not look crusty, but sure. Where a crusty looking teenager guards a selection of shirts and records. He singles me out from across the room and hops up on his chair. <laughs> Step on up, get your merch here. I got t-shirts, I got tank tops, I got all the gifts that accoutrement, a discerning concert goer of considerable taste might want. You! I gesture to myself, my face flushing red. You looking at me? Yes, you! You look like a fella who knows their music. How's about a fine 12-inch long playing vinyl record made and distributed by Pup, Canada's premier punk rock outfit? Uh... <laughs> Tally ho, good sir! Or please stop yelling at me. What do we say to the crusty lad yelling at us? Okay, the, yeah, I'll give you the shirt. The shirt definitely makes him look crusty. Um... I don't know, I don't know. Crusty, maybe? He looks maybe more greasy than crusty, but, you know. We're splitting, splitting semantic hairs. <laughs> okay, one vote for, uh, two votes for, uh, one vote for please stop yelling at me. I'm gonna need a couple more votes before I decide. Mm -mm 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 also, what is going on with that sheet in the background? What is that covering up? Hmm. Now I'm thinking about all the conspiracy theories that could be going on with this game. Instead of thinking about, like, the game itself. Um, okay. I think we are gonna go with, uh, with the uh, since that has the most number of votes, um, out of three. I sense some hesitation in your voice, buddy. Let me assure you on my reputation as salesman of the highest caliber that this record cannot and will not let you down. <laughs> okay, Pablo, you can give it a rest. The teen hops off his chair and takes a seat. Your friend looks lost, so I figured I'd give him the old razzle-dazzle. How the hell are you, Matt? Hey. <laughs> day by day, my man. They do that thing where they high-five, but also turn it into a hug. Hey. Pretty cool. Your mom doing better? She's still single. If you want to be my dad, I could make that connect. <laughs> <laughs> and have to deal with you every single day? Fair enough. Who's your bud? Hey, uh... That's Pastel. Thought I'd bring out a concert, pal. Pablo leans close to Matt. Is Pastel cool? Matt eyes me. I eye him back. Hmm. He cracks a smile. Oh. Yeah. Pablo brings me in for a bro hug. My dude! I'm not sure what to say, but give the courtesy two pats on the back as is customary in our society for people you don't know super well, but still want to be friendly to. Hey, yeah. Pablo's a total card. Kid plays the hell out of a bass. Yeah, man, when are we starting our witch house band? Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. <laughs> you know I'm out of the game. It's a shame. You know, Vacant Vale would have slayed. <laughs> I'll slay you once you start actually making music instead of just printing a bunch of band shirts. We got the sickest logo. While Matt and Pablo talk, I check out the merch. These shirts are really nice. Mm. Looks like the opener's coming on. Let's get a spot up close. Hey. Matt and I walk over to the stage where a crowd begins to form. The band walks on stage and pick up a variety of strange instruments. Is that a harpsichord? The lead singer addresses the crowd. He has a mandolin slung behind his back. I am in, I am in for these. Hmm. <laughs> hey, uh, what's up everybody? We're Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. My name's Daniel. Let's start the show. Hmm. Oh no, these guys. What? Without time to respond, the band starts playing the most cacophonous noise I have ever heard. What is this? Matt doesn't say anything. He just hands me earplugs. Thanks! Oops, clicked out of the game again. 
I put the earplugs in, and whatever the hell is assaulting my ears gets a lot quieter. For a band this bad, they sure do seem to be having fun. I guess that's what really matters. Hey. Jesus, did that cellist just break his bow in half? I don't get this. The set seems to go on forever. There's no breaks in the songs, and I think one of the band members' jobs is specifically just to burn poetry on stage. I turn to Matt and try to start a conversation. So, you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? Hmm. What? <laughs> do we keep trying to talk to him, or do we just let it go and let the assault continue? I don't know how far we're going to get in a conversation like this when we're both wearing earplugs. But I defer all decisions to you. Okay, one vote for drop it, two votes for drop it, three votes for drop it. That is all I need, ladies and ladies and gents. He can't hear me, so I just stop and try to enjoy the music. Mm, okay, no, this is impossible. How long have they been playing the same song? Ten minutes? Twenty? A year? Eventually... Eventually, the set ends, but only after the drummer sprains his ankle during his saxophone solo. I'm not gonna lie to you, I kinda wanna see this band. They promised it was part of the act as he was carried off stage crying. Hmm. It's good showmanship. Matt and I both pull our earplugs out. Man, that was something. I promise Pup is much better. I just have a lot of questions that I know I'll never get the answer to. Oh yeah, he sprains his ankle at every show. They were being real about that. Hey. Can you sprain your ankle that many times? Jesus. Let's grab another beer. Matt and I work our way out of the crowd and back to the bar. More and more people file into the concert space as it gets closer to the main act. It's getting kind of crowded in here. We grab our beers and try to follow Matt back to our spot, but there are so many people that I'm having a hard time keeping up. As I work my way through the throngs of excited concert goers, I realize I've lost Matt entirely. I stop and look around, seeing nothing but a sea of hip 20-somethings. I'm lost. How am I ever gonna find Matt here? Where's the exit? Can somebody call my mom? Call him over the loudspeaker! Are there even exits? What if I'm trapped in this building forever? Am I gonna see my daughter ever again? What if that terrible band gets back on stage? What if? Suddenly, a hand reaches out to grab me. It's Matt! Oh, thank God. <laughs> Almost lost you, buddy. Whew, I got really nervous there for a second. Hey. You and me both, dude. He takes my hand and leads me back towards the stage. He's holding my hand. I can feel myself blushing a little. We finally settle back in our spot and wait for the band to start. <laughs> Busy place, huh? Hey. Yeah, Pup really brings out a crowd. So, uh, you go to concerts a lot? Hey. Oh yeah, it's one of my absolute favorite things in the world. I think it's one thing to listen to music and connect with it, but when you're in a room full of people connecting with the music just the same way that you are, that's magic. Oh, Matt. Oh, oh my goodness. I suddenly have the urge to pee. Curse this tiny dad bladder. I've never heard it put that way. That's really beautiful. Also, I have to pee. Hey. <laughs> Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. I squeeze my way out of the crowd towards the restroom. I really should have gone before I left the house, but Amanda was watching beauty videos in the bathroom. She had an eyeliner wing going halfway across her face, which was actually a pretty good look. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her! I'm so proud of my daughter. I make it to the restroom, but it's one of those single-person restrooms with a line forming outside of it. As soon as I finish my business, the band starts. Crap. The people that were initially mulling around the venue all crowd up against the stage as Pup plays their first song. How am I ever going to find Matt now? Why is my poor dad so terrible? Oh, Jesus, it's a mini game. Oh. oh, what is the... Oh, I love this. What? 
Everyone's rushing to the main stage to watch Pup play. I'm sure Matt will be up there too. I gotta find him before I get trampled by all these rowdy youths. Find that dad. Do I click? What do I do? Okay, it's like, it's like Frogger. Oh fuck! It's like Frogger, this but with is like. Part of the game where you should have been hearing a licensed tune. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so this song is happening because I, um, I clicked it. Shut, stop touching me. Uh, I, I clicked an option at the beginning of the game that said, like, if you want to stream the game, click this option and we'll get rid of, like, this takes all the copyright material out of the, out of the game so that you can stream it. Because if you stream things with copyright material in them, Twitch will, um, mute your whole video and you won't be able to hear any of the audio. So that was really cool that they included that as an option for the game, which also makes sense because the developers are all streamers themselves, so. Oh, no, I missed a heart. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Mini games are so hard. Fuck, fuck. Okay, so everybody go check out Pup's music. Yes, take it oh, no, 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 no. It's like Do I ever actually see Matt? Is there an end to this game? Or really cool, but it's kind of hard to explain right now. But yeah, yeah, it it is... really go check it out. No, it's really hard to control. So we added the song that oh, it's really hard. It's really, 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 really hard. Ah! Don't you think it's better? I'm just gonna pick up all the hearts. Streamers and let's players. Oh, this is so hard. Degree. Please check out the band called Pup and their song DVP. I did it! Yay! DVP. Oh my god, that was so hard. But really, content ID demands a serious convo. <laughs> but is this the time? Place to talk about it. Okay, I'm just listening to the song now. I'm finally able to work my way through the crowd to where Matt originally was, but he's nowhere to be found. I'm gonna turn this out a little bit because I want to make sure that you can hear me. Um, I bumped into from behind, and I find myself in the middle of a bunch of youths running around in a circle to the music. I'm in the pit. How do I get out of the pit? Out of nowhere, a youth shoulders himself into me and keeps moving in a circle. Hey! I guess I'm moving in the circle now! I frantically search for a way out, but all I can see is an ocean of youths rhythmically slamming into each other. Another youth slams into me, and I lose my balance. I am about to topple over. This is it. This is how I die. Trampled under the boots of the counterculture. Someone grabs my hand. Someone familiar. I look up and see Matt! He pulls me back up onto my feet. Oh, 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 we got them, we got them, we got them, we got them. Matt throws his arms around me and we jump back into the circle, bashing into youths left and right as Pup plays a killer solo. I didn't know you messed with the pit. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'm having fun. I'm a little mad that I didn't stretch before physical activity, but I'm having fun. The song ends and the pit finally dissipates. Everybody cheers on Pup. Maybe I only got enough pit energy for one song. Haha, <laughs> alright man, let's retreat. We'll show these kids how it's done another day. We work our way back to a more comfortable spot in the crowd and enjoy the rest of the show from a safe distance. Pup put on an amazing set and basically had to beg themselves off stage after their encore. With the concert over, the crowd starts making their way to the exit. Hey, I'll meet you outside. Gotta say bye to a couple people. I hang outside of the venue until Matt finally shows up. Okay, I'll turn the volume of the game back up. Hey man, thanks for waiting. I got you a present. <gasps> you got me a present? He hands me the t-shirt I was looking at earlier. Whoa! Thanks, man! Hey. Saw you eyeballing it back at the merch booth. And I mean, anyone who tears it up that hard on their first time back to a concert deserves a reward. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there, there's maybe someone else who could give me as a reward, Matt, if you want to, but, uh... Okay, the youths will finally accept me. Amanda will love this. I am 
never taking this off. I feel like we probably shouldn't say Amanda will love this because then that implies that we are not going to keep the present that he gave us. Um, but also that could possibly show that we're thinking of our daughter, which is maybe a nice thing. So I don't know. All right. I'm never taking so vote for an anything. Two votes for never taking this off. Yep, okay, there it is. Third vote. There it is. I'm never taking this off. I will continually wear it until it is tattered and a little smelly so that I can truly embody punk fashion. Hey, Matt! I don't know who that is. Hey. Oh my god, it's the fucking band. Hey, it's Pup. Okay, that's... What? Not what I expected. Okay. <laughs> hey, dude, didn't realize you were here. Hey. I'm so glad I could make it. You guys put on a great show. <laughs> Thanks. Hey. Well, see you around. Did they? Do you think they paid for that? Do you think they paid for that guest appearance? Wait, you know Pup? Hey, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, met him a couple of times when they first started touring. Good kids. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. He's definitely too cool for me. <laughs> Come on, let's grab some diner food. I suddenly realized just how hungry I am. Man, monster pits take a lot out of you. So true. Matt and I walked to a little diner. Oh, I missed what that said. Okay. So there I am. So there I am in the pit, trying to explain to the face tattoo guy that I didn't mean to elbow him in the face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. Not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. He's lumbering toward me, and there's nowhere to go. Hey. It's the end for me, right? Then, out of nowhere, I get this idea. I just lean back and spread my arms. And just like that, I'm sur crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. Hey, dude. Bought him a beer afterwards, and we were cool. We still follow each other on social media. He has beautiful kids. Matt, you are just, you are an angel. An angel amongst trash who do not deserve you. Glad you guys worked it out. Hey. Yeah, man, just goes to show you that Punk's not dead. Just drives a minivan and has to hire a babysitter. And has to drink water. Stay hydrated. So how did you get to see all these amazing concerts? Uh -oh. oh, I used to tour in a band. We were small, but it got us to travel all around the States. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I mean, we were poor, and we had to scrape a lot together just to survive, but I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. But yeah, that's how I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music like this builds an amazing community, especially in a town like this. Just a lot of positive energy and good vibes. I got that feeling. Plenty of friendly people. Especially that Pablo kid. See, I told you, friendship is at the core of true punk. Hey. Oh man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him on her own, and you can tell it's been tough on both of them. I know he looks up to me, so I try to help him out wherever I can. Such a good guy. That's really nice of you. Oh. Thanks. Us single parents just really have to look out for each other. How's Carmencita? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh boy. Those earplugs is gonna come in handy. It'll be loud, and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly very grateful that all of my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever it is that she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. Hmm. I'm trying to be supportive of Carmen Sita's rebellious phase, but I guess that kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? I think it would be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something to rebel against together. Hey. Like what? Fashion, consumerism, or big-budget remakes of foreign films. What is a good thing, what is a good daddy-daughter thing to rebel against? I am pretty sure I know which response none of the people in the chat are going to choose, considering who is in here.
This is really nice music. The diner music is. This is not like the kind of music you would actually hear in a diner, but for a scene in a game taking place in a diner, it's very lovely. Okay, one vote for big budget remakes of foreign films. Which is, I am in favor of railing against that. Consumerism, okay. But also remember that Matt owns a business. I'm not saying that he's in favor of consumerism. Like, I'm not saying that he's like a capitalist or anything, but he, remember he's also a business owner. Oh, <gasps> Cindy. Fashion? Do you know who you're talking to? Not me. I mean, kind of me, but the folks in the chat, I think, might disagree with that. Uh, we got two votes for remakes, so I'm going to go with remakes. <laughs> reading subtitles isn't even that hard. I think we just have to strive as a society to be okay with reading subtitles. <laughs> he and I laugh. <laughs> we keep digging into our big plates of greasy diner food. The breakfast I ordered for dinner is absolutely hitting the spot. Yes, that is the right thing to do when you go to a diner. Breakfast for dinner. Oh. Man, hey dude. being a single, <laughs> hey dude, being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's a lonely feeling. I understand that all too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to. Oh. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Hmm. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Matt gets nervous talking to people? But he's so cool. Me too. I've never really considered myself an extrovert, and never really considered myself an introvert. I'm just uncomfortable in every situation, always. Hey. That's right, Pastel. Ah, uh, you're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to, you know that? I smile. Matt and I spend the rest of the night trading daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot alike. We finish up our late night dinners and head out. So did I just not get a response? Like, did I just not get any reaction to that? Or was that a dialogue option that wouldn't have given me any, like, hearts or anything at all? I don't know. We walked back to the cul-de-sac, back to our respective houses. Hey. Tonight was a blast, man. <laughs> Loved it. Although I'm probably going to feel it in my knees in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Hmm. I, uh... Usually don't like going to these things alone. It was really cool to have you there with me. I'm glad. Uh -huh. Alright, I'm calling it quits for the night. Stay cool, man. He called me cool. Matt called me cool! Matt thinks I'm cool? I walk into the house with my heart in my throat. Amanda pops her head out from her room. Mm. Hey, Pops. How is the show? Matt thinks I'm cool! <laughs> you don't say. Manda Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool! <laughs> blind leading the blind, huh? Oh. Wow, I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. Hey, Amanda, remind me which one of us just tore it up in the pit at a punk show, and which one of us just sent... Bent Four hours probably watching Tiny House Hunting Amish Triplets Extreme Edition. Hmm? Hmm? First of all, how dare you? That show is a classic. Second of all, you moshed in the pit? Who even are you? I am your extremely cool dad. Huh. All right. I'm hitting the hay, Pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. Date complete! Oh, what? Man, that was some great stuff up there. How did we only get a B? We beat the minigame. And we got the eggplants. What? I contest that grade. I completely contest that grade. But that's fine. That's fine. I'll take it. I'll take a B. I'll take a B. I also don't, I don't think that the, I don't think that the date grades actually, like, matter in terms of, like, I think you still get to, you get to still do three dates, I think, and I think you still get to choose whoever you want, no matter what grade you get. I think the grading is just, like, 
you know, you just like they want you to try to get, you know, as best as you can. But I don't think it actually matters. So that's fine. I'll take it. That's fine. You're right. It's not cool to be too good. We're going to be a solid B. It's above average, but it's not like we're trying too hard, right? Welcome. We got an achievement called that's King of Carrot Flowers. I don't, I don't know what that's a reference to, but that's fine. Okay, so, uh, what's it? I, I don't know what the difference between dad and daddy, but I think daddy points is like the like romance kind of options, I think, and dad points is maybe just like how you relate to one another on like sort of a platonic like dad to dad level. I think I don't know. I'm I'm making that up. Um, I think that that seems to make sense to me. Yeah, I don't know how my ska score was high, was low. I mean, I was in a ska band as a teenager, but maybe I should have brought that up. Oh, Neutral Milk Hotel? Okay. Um, the eggplants were in the response to the I'm never taking it off question, I think, um, about the t-shirt. Um, that's where we got the eggplants from, so. Um, okay. So that is it for today. We went on two dates. So it looks like the dates are taking me a lot longer to do than I expected them to. It's, it's been roughly about like a half an hour to 45 minutes for each date. Um, so we are super not gonna finish this game in the next, the next round that we play, but that's okay. Um, I think we could get it done if we do, if I do a couple more streams. Um, and the semester hasn't started up for me yet, so I could keep doing this, um, for like a week or so, or like in the next like week or, or two. Um, so, uh, we'll be back on tomorrow, I think I said six o'clock uh, central time. Uh, and we'll go until maybe like 10 or 11. Um, and then after that's over, um, I'll probably, I'll put a poll up. Um, in the Facebook event so that folks can let me know uh, what dates and times um, work for everybody. Um, and then we'll set up some more streams so that we can um, finish this game together because y'all have been instrumental to me making it through this game and I don't want to play this by myself. I want to play it with all of you. So thank you all again for tuning in. This has been really, really fun. Um, it's really exciting to be able to play this game with other people, even though you all aren't in the room with me. Um, it feels like we're all in a room together, and it's the joy of technology. So, um, thank you all again for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock, hopefully. Um, in the meantime, uh, hydrate, drink a lot of water, um, and eggplants to everybody! Okay, uh, I will see you all in the next stream, if not sooner. Okay. <laughs>